Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech and my series on a teacher's guide to Microsoft Excel. In this video we're going to be looking at tip 3, converting between marks, levels and grades and we're going to be using Excel's newest function, XLOOKUP. Now XLOOKUP is quite similar to VLOOKUP which I covered in the last video and I'm going to be building on this and other concepts introduced in earlier videos in this series. I do recommend watching the series from the beginning as it will all make much more sense that way. I've put the series link up here in case you've just dropped in mid-series and you want to go back and check those videos out first. Otherwise, let's get into it. So we saw last time that VLOOKUP is similar to looking down a list with one finger until you find what you're looking for and then reading across to find the value that you want. Now XLOOKUP is more like looking down two lists with two fingers and then stopping when you find what you're looking for in the first list and then reading off the value you find under your finger in the same place on your second list. Now in this table here I've got three different attainment scales that were being used in the English education system not so long ago. So from this table you can see a level of 7.2 is equivalent to a grade C which is worth 43 points. Now you may or may not recognize these but really the point is that often in education we seem to have student data measured using one scale that we are trying to compare with data measured in another. I'm going to show you how you can convert one to the other using the XLOOKUP function. Firstly we are going to name each column of this table separately. So for the first column we're going to call these level the second column we're going to call grade and a third column I'm going to call points. Now let's have a look at the syntax of the XLOOKUP function. XLOOKUP actually has six input values but the last three are optional and mostly not needed. So I'm going to start off just looking at the first three. So the simplified version of the XLOOKUP function is equals XLOOKUP lookup value lookup range return range. So if I want to find the equivalent level to a grade C+, I can type in the formula equals XLOOKUP C+, plus, comma grade, comma level. So C+, plus is the lookup value. I have to type it in wrapped in speech marks because it's text and not a number. Grade is the lookup range and level is the return range. So what Excel is going to do, it's going to look down the grade list and the level list until it comes across C plus on the grade list and then it's going to stop. It's then going to return whatever value it's got to at the same point on the level list. So that's going to be 7.5. Next, if I want to convert 41 points to a level, that's going to be equals X lookup open brackets 41 comma points comma level which gives me the value 6.8. Now notice 41 is not in speech marks because it's a number and not text. You'll see this across Excel formulas and also in programming generally that text goes in speech marks and numbers do not. The next example wants to convert the level 5.63 to a grade, but notice 5.63 is not one of the possible values of level. So if I just put it in as it is, so equals X lookup 5.63 levels grade, it's going to give me the answer NA, which is an error message short for not available. Now I mentioned earlier that there were three optional inputs for X lookup, and this is an example of when one of them might come in handy. The three optional additional inputs are if not found, match mode, and search mode. If not found allows us to enter a value or text you want to display if no match is found. So rather than this function returning the NA error, I could get it to say something instead. So XLOOKUP equals 5.63 levels grade comma nope is going to return the value nope. The next input is match mode and this behaves in the same way as the true false input does in the VLOOKUP function. Now it defaults to zero, so if you miss it out, XO is going to just assume that you want to do an exact search. If you make it negative one, it's going to return the exact match or the next smaller value, and a one is going to return the exact match or the next larger value. 
So in this case, if we had done some sort of calculation and ended up with the level of 5.63, I would interpret this as not quite being the, of the next standard up. So I think that minus one is the correct one to choose here. So let's type equals x lookup open brackets 5.63 comma levels comma grade comma comma minus one. So I've put two commas in because I'm not going to bother having a custom error message this time, but I do want it to return the closest lower value. The final optional field is for search mode. If you set this to minus one, x lookup is going to search backwards from the bottom of the list and work upwards rather than the default way of working from the top of the list and going down. But I don't need to do that right now, so I'm just gonna leave it off. Again, we can use the contents of a cell as the lookup value. So here I can write equals x lookup b42, comma grade, comma points. And actually it's really handy to do it this way as you can then do a fill down and apply this formula really quickly to a whole column of values. So just select it and drag down on this little square here on the bottom right of the cell. Okay, time for you to try some of this for yourself. Pause the video and have a go at task three. Once you're done, come back and press play again. Welcome back, hopefully your table now looks something like this. If it does, well done. You're starting to get the hang of these. If not, have another go and see if you can get the same answers as I'm showing here. Don't forget to tick the completed box once you're ready to move on. For the majority of times you'll want to use XLOOKUP, it will be in its default basic setup with just the three inputs. But of course you will always have the option of those extra three inputs when you do need them. Add to the fact that your two lists don't need to be in the same table or even on the same page or workbook. They don't need to be aligned or start in the same row one list can start further down the page than the other, and they don't need to be in any particular order, so your return values can appear on the left of your lookup value. So all these reasons make XLOOKUP a much more versatile function than its predecessor, VLOOKUP. So does it completely replace VLOOKUP? Well, we've already seen that XLOOKUP can do everything VLOOKUP can do, and then some. It's way more efficient too, returning values much faster than VLOOKUP and this can have a significant impact on performance on a large detailed spreadsheet with a lot of VLOOKUP values. Personally though, I still tend to use VLOOKUP when I'm just pulling in data from one big table, as VLOOKUP only requires one range as its input value, whereas XLOOKUP requires two. So in practice, VLOOKUP may be quicker and easier to use if you are just pulling in a lot of different columns from the same large table, as you simply need to name the whole data table once. Now I'm prepared to admit that this might be because I'm more used to using VLOOKUP, and you might decide just to stick with the more efficient XLOOKUP function from now on. XLOOKUP is only available in the latest version of Excel, and before this came out, I used to do all these grade conversions using VLOOKUPs instead. I've left the older method in the workbook just in case some of you are running older versions of Excel. But if you can use XLOOKUP, just skip this page and go on to tip four conditional formatting. If you like this video, please do let me know by clicking on the like button below. Also, why not subscribe, which just means that YouTube is going to be a little bit more likely to recommend my videos to you in future. Click over here to start the next video in this Excel series, or click on the thumbnail below it for the full series playlist. You might also like this other great EdTech tutorial down here. See you on the next video.